I've bought a piece of an old Discovery body shell. Included in the price was this razor's edge. And an entire pane of glass. G'day YouTubers, it's uh, Land Rover Discovery time again and today I'm going to be tackling this bonded window. Yeah, well, I've never done, uh, never done bonded glass before. I've done a few of the, uh, the traditional window rubber jobs, but um, this is completely new to me. So I need to begin by getting this duct tape off. Luckily the, uh, the paint is good, so I'm gonna worry about duct tape. Well, fingers crossed, pulling any paint off. Leaves behind a bit of glue, but I can clear that up with some white spirit. Right, so I'm gonna start by getting this glass out. I've got a sheet on the ground because there's going to be even more bits of glass falling off. And a uh, sharp knife. So listen carefully chaps and chapettes. It's going to be a two-pronged attack. I'm going to be cutting in from this side and hopefully on this side. I have a good pair of gloves on because I don't want to be scraping the side of my hand down this glass for obvious reasons. Might be a bit of wind noise today on the microphone because um, there's a bit of a nice breeze blowing. So let's get cut in. Hmm. And also I want to make sure I don't slip and stick another scratch on the body. One's enough for me, thank you. Tough stuff. I am a man. Therefore, I'm going to cut some glass out. Ah, here we go. Yes, I think. It's the two-pronged attack, old boy. So, chocks away. I'm going to get cutting. As with a lot of things, when you're cutting things away, the best way to do it really is once you've got it started, you can get the knife behind. You can pull this away, get the knife behind getting the bits of glass out of the way and then whilst you're pulling you can do that mm. there's bits of glass springing all over the place so I think I'll put some gobbles on all right now we can get going again it's not helped by this in a trim. This is going to be slow and methodical work. It's an inescapable fact that you're going to have bits of glass flying everywhere, even more than you had when it was broken. This bonding stuff is very, very strong, I have to say. Um, so instead of working away with long bits dangling everywhere, do a bit and then trim the stuff off and a lot easier. And it's also inevitable that you're going to be 
slicing away little bits of your inner trim, but you're not going to see that as long as you don't cut away too much. No one's going to notice. <clears throat> it's unavoidable that you will scratch a good bit Ooh. of the window opening. Um, but this is all going to be covered up by window bond and you also get a primer to prime any bare bits of metal so it'll all be covered anyway oh. and with that hoovered out and cleaned up as well um, this safety glass not only does it break into lovely little little diamonds it also turns to powder and it sticks to the body and you need to get a, a very wet cloth or sponge and just gently wipe it all off very gently otherwise you'll have minute little diamond scratches all over your car right, so to ease of uh, cleaning this old bonding seal up I've taken oh, I've taken the two bolts the uh, screws out of here which is an, and disconnected the this side of the dog guard and slid the load cover tray off and that enables me to be able to move this back just enough so that when I come to stick the window on this isn't pushing against it um, this this old seal stays there because that is the best surface for bonding the new piece of glass and the same with on the glass as well because it's a used bit of glass that'll have bond on it as well so I'm not concerned about removing every trace of bond from the glass because that will give me the best adhesion to this now I need to disconnect this final piece of glass which is stuck to the aerial uh, plug now looking at the new piece of glass it's a popper type like you have on your coat sort of attachment so I should in theory be able to get two pliers and very gently hopefully this glass will probably explode ah there we go it just comes apart like that that's all it is is a, a popper same there I'll probably when I come to refit that I might just squeeze the contacts in slightly so that there's a nice tight fit for the new one and that's out of there now before I do any more to this here I'm going to get the new bit of glass out and then I'll be having a go at this dent so this is another laborious task I'm still gonna wear gloves because this has got a lethal edge all the way around and it's double skin so there's eight razor edges um, I should imagine that the, the breakers that do these, they don't want to risk trying to cut the glass out and breaking it, so they'd rather just discutter a chunk out the side of the discovery and leave that up to the hapless mechanic, such as myself. Now I'm going to have to do the same, it's going to have to be both sides cut through. And then when I've done the one side, I can turn it over. And do the other side very carefully. And those two, that edge, is separated. So I shall do that all the way around. This is hot, sweaty work, I can tell you. And I've, over the course of about 10 minutes, made my way around and I'm getting to the end. It's very important that you don't think, oh, I'm nearly there. I've only got an inch to go or whatever, and just try to pull the glass off. Because this stuff shatters without a moment's hesitation. 
<laughs> making sure it's detached detached because I don't want to go suddenly pulling the whole lot off it's total coincidence by the way that this the car this came from is exactly the same colour as mine that's just total coincidence Whew. that was quite hot sweaty work that right so that's that out of there I need to clean up and level the older adhesive on this side which I shall do shortly now you're probably thinking Kevin why go through all that aggro why not just get a window company to do it or why not buy a new piece of glass and then you haven't got to mess about cleaning all this up well the reason is a piece of this glass would set you back new £150. This was £32 delivered. And with yet another new Stanley blade, I'm going to be cutting off, not right to the, uh, that's a, this black bit is ceramic. I don't want to cut right to that because I want to keep some of this old seal as I said before that is the best surface you could possibly have for bonding because this stuff apparently likes to stick to itself it's very friendly and we're almost there Just a couple of uh, little high spots to uh, go around. Let's get rid of those. But we're going to be putting a good thick trollop of the old seal on there because you have this black ceramic area which um, is to cover up the glue. Yes, I think we're getting there. So moving on to the dent here, um, I had considered removing the interior trim to get to the other side of it, but it turns out it's double skin, so I wouldn't be able to. So what I'm hoping, right, take the rear light out, I might be able to get to as much of it as I can. And I can, but only this bit, because this part is right down inside there and there's no way I'm going to get to that, but I can get to this area, if you focus please, please, focus, there's my finger, focus on my finger, no, right, I should be able to just pop out a little bit, this one here. Um, and this I'm just gonna have to paint uh, which is a shame but there's nothing I can do about it it's gonna have to stay there because this is double skin there's the interior skin which goes in around there and the outer skin right so with my assistant holding it's a it's a really heavy lead weight with a bit of rag wrap around it and I've got a small piece of tree wood I'm going to just as best I can hit it with my big persuader it's only aluminium but it's, um, I thought it'd be easier to move than this Part of the problem is I'm working on hitting it at an angle and the wood keeps sliding.
a very difficult angle to to get at. I might have to not bother. Now, scrub that. It hasn't made a blind jot of difference. It's so difficult to get into and the wood just keeps sliding every time I hit it. Yeah, you need to be able to hit it head on, but it's, it's in the worst place possible to have a dent. So I'm going to touch up with some touch up paint that I bought. Just thin lines along. And there you go, and then I'll leave it a couple of weeks and then tea cut it and polish it and, um, and hopefully it'll just be like one of those many cars you see in supermarkets dents in the corners you know reversing into shopping trolleys and other people's cars and all that kind of thing I suppose the secret with this is don't reverse into stuff in the first place so I've given it a wipe with some white spirit and um, I'll touch it up and the paint I'm using for that I got this from Halfords I went in there hoping to find a, an aerosol or touch up of some sort um, the code for this is 602 it's Oxford blue um, but they had sort of a lighter blue and then they went on to greens and then I saw a sign with a picture of a Halfords employee on it saying basically I can't remember exactly what it said but it basically said along the lines I can mix you any colour paint you want as long as I've heard of it so it did that £10.99 which for a touch up is quite cheap and it comes with a lovely little brush like I picked the wrong time to stop sniffing paint. Get a little bit of the paint there. Nice and don't want to go overboard but I want to sort of fill in the groove. Well that is a good match. And of course, when it, uh, this is all done from, you know, like the code and on the, uh, on the Halfords screen was the ingredients and there was 11 different colours to make up Oxford blue. And that's filled, that goes in very nicely. By the time this, I've given this a couple of weeks and it's dried, and then I give it a sort of a polish, it's going to be quite nice. Shame about the dent, because it'll be obvious where it is. If there hadn't been a dent and just a scratch, I would say this would have all but disappeared. That's an extremely good match. It's a shame about the dent. Yeah. Still, you can't have it all, you know. But I think one more coat of that, I'll give it five minutes, and give it another coat, and then I think I'll be ready for putting the window in. The 
product I'm going to be using for this is Dynatrol 500. Or why do they give them such superhero sort of names? I am Dynatrol. I have the power to stick anything. So I shall be blowing this straight on top of the old uh, PU because that is the best surface. No need to use any of the uh, paint primer that they provide because I'm not fitting to a bare paint uh, finish. So important to put on the rubber gloves they provide because apparently it contains all manner of man-made things. Plus I should imagine it's a nightmare to get off your hands afterwards. Looks like I picked the wrong time to stop sniffing glue. There's a very weird applicator on this, it has a cutout in it. going to put a slight thin bead on the uh, window as well. So now with the glass coated as well, I offer it up into place. Make sure it's the right way out, of course. And to get it lined up, give it a wiggle up and down. on the camera that it's very windy. With the glass held in place for 10 minutes and the dent painted and the light back in and the trim refitted I think I'm there. I mean the dent is there but I mean it's going to be forgotten about. I should imagine I mean it's uh, it's unfortunate, but it's just one of those things, isn't it? So I think that's another job to tick off the list.